Hi everybody and welcome to Teen Book Tuesday. I'm Lori and I'm the teen librarian at Manlius Library in Central New York and today I'm going to tell you about some brand new books that I just got in and they also happen to be fabulous summer reads. We're going to start with The Invincible Summer of Juniper Jones by Duncan McQueen. This one's historical fiction but it reads like contemporary fiction. It's the summer of 1955. For Ethan Harper, who's a biracial kid raised mostly by his white father, race has always been kind of a distant conversation. But when he gets in trouble in school and he's sent to spend the summer with his aunt and uncle in a small town in Alabama, his blackness is suddenly front and center. And no one is shy about making it known he's not welcome there. Enter Juniper Jones, the town's resident oddball and free spirit, she is everything the rest of the townspeople aren't. She's open, kind, and accepting. Armed with two bikes and an unlimited supply of root beer floats from his uncle's um, snack shop, Ethan and Juniper set out to find their place in a town that isn't welcoming to either of them. Next up, The Summer of Impossibilities by Rachel Allen. When their mothers, who were sorority sisters, decide to reunite in, in South Carolina, four high school girls find themselves spending a summer together. All four girls are struggling with something, as we all are. Scarlett is being pressured by her boyfriend. Her twin, softball player Skylar, has arthritis, and she's not really sure how to tell her parents she wants to change her meds. Amelia Grace was really looking forward to being a junior youth minister for the summer. But after accidentally kissing a girl in front of her congregation, she feels a lot of pressure to hide part of who she is. And Jamila, who goes by Ellie, is a tennis player who struggles with body image and belonging. As a biracial, she's white Indian, Muslim girl who passes for white. I know, it seems like a lot, but it works. They all make a pact to accomplish something impossible before the end of the summer. Along the way, they'll learn more about themselves and one another and delve deeply into what they each really want and what they have to do to achieve it. The story alternates between each girl's first person viewpoint, really well done with four separate voices, and it lets you learn about each girl's thoughts, personal ambitions, and fears, as well as events from their past. This is a character-driven, feel-good friendship book that's great for fans of Sarah Dessen and other realistic contemporary fiction fabulous summer read. Next we have something very different and yet not. It's called A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. This is an excellent book. It combines social dust, justice and protests with a fantasy world where sirens and gargoyles and more are real. It's about two teens, Tavia, who is a black teen in Portland, Oregon, in a world where magic is real and some magic is persecuted more than others. She hides her identity as a siren as a matter of survival. Since siren abilities only occur in the black female population, they're often killed when other type of types of magical abilities are accepted or even adored. Her friend, almost sister, Effie, isn't a siren but there's something weird going on with her and she's got some strange puberty changes happening. Her abilities are trying to manifest and she can't figure out what they are. Meanwhile, she's fighting her own family struggles and she's pitted against literal demons from her past. Together, these two best friends must navigate through the perils of junior year in high school. Oh, and for some reason, the only gargoyle in Portland, Oregon is living on their roof. When Effie's past refuses to stay buried and Tavia's siren magic slips free during an altercation with the police, the friends' lives are turned upside down and threatened. They must learn to exist, find peace and happiness, and stay safe in a world that suffers little love for black people and even less for their magical. Next up, Camp by L.C. Rosen. It's about Randy. Randy has spent summer after spectacular summer, since he was 12 as a matter of fact, at Camp Outland. It's a camp for queer kids where he gets to be his most extravagant self. That's pretty extravagant. It's been perfect, except for one thing, Randy's years long crush on Hudson Aronson Lim, a super masculine camper who famously only dates other super masculine guys. 
Randy is convinced that this will be the summer he lands the guy of his dreams. He's spent the whole year turning himself into the guy of Hudson's dreams to make it happen. He's buffed up, cut his hair, and changed his name to Dell. Of course, that means no more camp musical, no more unicorn trampocalypse nail polish, and no more wild outfits. Randy, Dell, knows it's all worth it for love. But is this really love if Hudson doesn't know who he truly is? And how much is he really willing to change himself for love? It's a sweet, sharp, screwball comedy. Critiques the culture of toxic masculinity within the queer community. It's a fun and inclusive story for slightly older teens, full of positive messages and lots of laughs. And finally today, The Say Yes Summer by Lindsay Roth Cully. What if you said yes to absolutely everything? Rachel Wall spent her entire career completely focused on academics and purposely cultivating total anonymity. Her hard work has made her valedictorian, but she's also missed out on lots of typical teenage experiences. When Rachel finds a book about the power of saying yes, she takes it as a sign. And in the months before she starts college, she embarks on a summer of yes. But, can Rachel figure out how to say yes to her longtime crush as well as an old family friend and verbal sparring partner? Or are there consequences to saying yes blindly? This is a nice, sweet, fluffy summer romantic comedy that starts with a graduation and ends with, well, no spoilers. But in between, there are days filled with a lakeside picnic, couch cuddling, and endless pizza and ice cream. It's a perfect end of the summer read. So there you have it, five great books to finish out your summer. Thanks for joining me for today's Teen Book Tuesday. If you are signed up for the Teen Summer Reading Program, your code today is OCEAN, capital O, C-E-A-N, OCEAN. Head over to your account, click on the Teen Book Tuesday mission and enter OCEAN to complete today's activity. After today, there's only one more Teen Book Tuesday for the summer, but stay tuned because in just a second, I've got a promo coming up to show you all the great things that are gonna happen in the fall. So I hope you found something you like to read today and I'll see you next week. Have a great week, enjoy your weekend. Happy reading. And now, I have some programming notes for you for what's coming up. As fun as it's been, my summer virtual programming, Middle Grade Monday, Teen Book Tuesday, Create with Lori, and Lunchtime Poetry will come to an end the week of August 31st. So the week leading up to Labor Day will be the last week of summer programming. I'll be taking a couple weeks off from programming starting the Labor Day weekend. That's to give me some planning time and also to give you all some time to settle into new and different fall and back to school schedules. But never fear, I will be back with virtual programming beginning the week of September 21st. Some of the programming is gonna stay the same. Some of it's gonna change a little bit. I'll tell you what's gonna happen. Middle Grade Monday is coming back. Monday's at four. It will focus entirely on middle grade books, primarily grades four to seven. I'm taking the craft part out. More on that in just a minute. Teen Book Tuesday will start up again, just as it's been, maybe even better. Tuesdays at four here on the YouTube channel. It'll continue to be a source for new and fantastic book suggestions and other bookish news from the teen room. For example, we just got in the audiobook of Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. If you're a Hunger Games fan, this is the fourth book in the series, which is actually a prequel, and I talk about it in a previous Teen Book Tuesday. We also just got Midnight Sun, the Twilight Saga from Edward's point of view. This one has a little bit of a wait list, so get yourself over to our website and put a hold on it so you can get your copy. And don't forget, we have several teen Kindles. These are loaded, preloaded, with lots and lots of great young adult books and audiobooks and some games and other apps. So don't forget that those are available for you to call and request for curbside service. I have a new program starting on Thursday, September 24th. It's called Take and Make, and it's for teens and tweens ages 10 and up. It'll post every Thursday at 4 p.m. on YouTube. It's going to replace Create with Lori. So it'll be crafts and art activities, but you'll be able to register for a kit. Come and get it via our curbside service, and then craft, paint, sew, 
In other words, make art with me, but at your convenience. The kits will be limited in number and available until they're gone. The program will be pre-recorded and available at any time after posting. And the kits will include everything you need to make the project, with the exception of some common household items like scissors, pens and pencils, and occasionally some glue. Lunchtime Poetry is taking a hiatus, but never fear, it will be back for National Poetry Month in April, and maybe even for some special occasions between now and then. And looking forward to later in the fall, I do have some new things I'm working on for October and November. First Fridays will be a monthly program starting in October with something different every month for teens and tweens, or anyone really. Maybe a scavenger hunt, or an escape experience, or a trivia contest. I'll present it via YouTube the first Friday of every month at 9 a.m., so stay tuned for details soon about the first, first Friday. Teen Trivia will start on October 7th. It's going to be every other Wednesday night at 7.30 on Facebook Live using Kahoot. You'll be able to compete individually or on teams for prize packs that you can pick up via our curbside service. And then in November, I know that's a long way away, but starting November 1st, Monday in a mug. So alternate evenings, 7.30 on Facebook Live. I will show teens or anyone how to make things in a mug using basic ingredients and a microwave. I'll provide a list of ingredients ahead of time and it'll be posted on our calendar. So watch for details about that. I think we're gonna start with cake in a mug. In addition to my programming, Miss Wendy, of course, has a great lineup of programming for the younger set, and there's lots coming for adults as well, so stay tuned for that. We're also working on some different resources to help out with the challenges this new school year will bring for everyone. So stay tuned for more announcements about that. In the meantime, remember to take advantage of our curbside service. You can reserve and check out books, audiobooks, movies, even binge boxes, and so much more. Visit our website at manliestlibrary.org for more details and to make a curbside appointment. I hope you've found some small pleasure in the programming we've offered this summer. Enjoy the rest of your August. If you have any questions or comments about any of this, or suggestions for future programs or services that we could provide, please send me an email at lfinger at manliestlibrary.org. I'll see you in the fall. Be cool, stay well, and happy reading.